and welcome to a brand new Let's Play. <clears throat> Back when Electronic Arts wasn't a big pile of crap. If you could look like it said Interactive Stories, so we've got something new coming your way you may not have heard of before. But this is set in London, England, November 1888. I'm telling you, this is back when Electronic Arts had their shit together. Before they became some gigantic conglomerate. Lots of early Electronic Arts stuff was quite amazing. This is the Lost Files of Sherlock Holmes. Heck yes. In the alley behind the Regency Theater. Crap is going down. Oh, kitty! Uh oh. Uh oh. Dark. Ominous. Uh oh. He was tiptoeing. Diddly -diddly -diddly -diddly. Oh, smoking. You know that's bad for you. Look at that animation on those legs. Uh-oh! He's got a little knife! I'm going to poke you with it, my dear. Uh-oh. The game is afoot! Early the following morning on Baker Street. He's playing kick the can. What a surprise. It's raining and gloomy in London. It's a shame. Yes? <laughs> Begging your pardon, ma'am. This is a note for Mr. Holmes from Inspector Lestrade of Scotland Yard. Yes, we do have voice acting. Oh, very well. I'll see that he gets it. Thank you, Constable. Not a ton, but there is some in this. Have you been sufficiently fortified by Mrs. Hudson's murderous coffee, Watson, to put your mind to this mystery? Whatever are you on about, home so early in the morning? I'm sorry to interrupt your reading, old man. Mrs. Hudson has just delivered a very intriguing note. Would you care to peruse it? By all means. Mr. Holmes, a young woman has been brutally murdered outside the Regency Theatre in Oxford Street. The evidence here suggests that Jack the Ripper has emerged from under his rock in Whitechapel and struck savagely in Mayfair. Despite your contention that the Ripper's work is without motive, and therefore not suited for your methods, I believe you would find this case of interest, and the Yard would be most grateful to hear your opinions. Gina Strong. I will not deny his request. Watson, if you would accompany me, I should be glad to have you at my side. With pleasure, Holmes. Lestrade seems finally to have recognized the value of your investigative techniques. Oh, my blushes, Watson. Your compliment will turn my head. Let us see if I am truly worthy. Get me my opium! Alright, so let's kind of skip through this if we can. Okay. Let me check some things here. Okay. And of course, you can look at the bullet holes. Over 70 bullet holes compose a script rendition of the Sovereign's initials VR for Victoria, Victoria Regina. This redecoration re of the South Wall was recently performed with a pistol as a singular demonstration of patriotism for the beloved Queen's Golden Jubilee on 21 June 1887. The periodic Table of Elements, edition 1886, is affixed on the wall with brass carpet tacks. Immediately below it are hung measuring paraphernalia and a small ball peen hammer. And it's Dr. Watson, and he appears to await instruction. One of the 205 violins made in Cremona by the master Antonio Stradivari between 1700 and 1737. 
Despite its value, that instrument lays within easy reach, unprotected from Watson's uncertain coordination and the fluctuating humidity caused by the capricious London climate. An original composition, though one scarcely worthy of note, it was only put to paper to at Watson's insistence. Let's head outside, because it heads to Baker Street. Come along, Watness, oh, Watson. <laughs> the game's afoot. Quite so, Holmes. Now, there is a voice, like, complete voice version um, for the 3DO of all things. <laughs> Wiggins. Let's touch Wiggins. Okay, let's exit. We don't need them right now. Let's head over this way. Okay, we need to go to the alley. Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson, very good of you to come so quickly. After you've thoroughly examined the scene in the Corpus Delicta, please share your observations with me. Okay, so let's take a look. A woman approximately 25 years old, has had her jugular vein viciously slashed. This was certainly the cause of death. There are several non-fatal gashes on her abdomen, abrasions on the back of her neck, and scratches on her left ring finger. The distinct odor of a particularly cloying and inexpensive brand of perfume pervades the body. Let's look at the knife wounds. The wounds were clearly made with a short blade, perhaps the size and shape of a scalpel. Close observation reveals that the blade was serrated. There is a trace of a white, powdery residue of unknown nature on the victim's coat, immediately beside what appears to be the first of the abdominal wounds. And there goes the kitty. Let's look at the uh, white, powdery residue. The substance was most probably on the murder weapon at the time of the attack. A thorough chemical analysis would most likely reveal its composition. So let's pick up... The white powdery residue. Okay, we've picked it up. Now let's pick up the... Actually, let's take a... I think we're actually going to pick it up. Take a look at the iron bar. This is a two-foot section of iron pipe. Both ends are corroded by rust. There's a trace of red paint on one end. Okay, so we picked up the bar. Hmm. Let's see here. That's what I was looking for. It appears to be a common theater playbill. It may be common, but we're going to take it. Let's look at the handbag. It is a simple silk-lined handbag, sometimes called a uh, reticule. The contents, a pocket mirror, a tin of facial powder, a large metal key, a kerchief, and some cog... Uh, I can't... I don't know what that is. And some cautious? I don't know. Have been dumped out and apparently subjected to a hasty search. Some things I don't know how to say. A large burly constable. The constable diligently guards the scene of the crime while trying unsuccessfully to direct his gaze away from the body. Okay, so let's talk to Lestrade. Is there anything you can tell me that isn't obvious from the scene? Inspector? The deceased was an actress here at the theater, name of Sarah Carraway. She lived by herself out in Bayswater. According to our only witness, there is a sister, whereabouts presently unknown. The witness found the body, but remembers nothing of the person she saw fleeing the scene. You may talk to her if you like, though she's a bit in the way of being hysterical at the moment. She's in the victim's dressing room, through that door and up the stairs. But before you go, I'd like you to confirm some theories of my own. Okay, so we've talked to him about it. Talk to him again. Have you already decided on an explanation for the crime, Inspector? There's no doubt that this is the Ripper's doing. 
The fact that we are miles away from his habitual haunts in Whitechapel is of absolutely no significance. If he'd left his calling card, it would be no clearer. The man is a monster. Hmm. You seem very sure of your facts, Lestrade, but I believe that there is evidence to contradict your interpretation. I assure you that I have examined everything in great detail, Mr. Holmes. I seriously doubt that I have missed a significant clue. What have you seen that goes against my theory? I didn't even mean to click on that. A large bottle of the scent that she's wearing sits on the vanity in the victim's dressing room. Powerful smell, isn't it? But the absence of the bottle is no mystery. The killer's choice of weapon is most telling, don't you think? Indeed. My professional eye tells me this woman was killed with a surgeon's scalpel. And we know the Ripper uses the scalpel with the skill of a medical man. Isn't that so, Dr. Watson? From what I have read, Inspector, my answer is yes. But I would not presume to commit myself before the autopsy is completed. I must say that if a scalpel was used, it was a dull one. The wounds appear a bit ragged. Well, that as it may be. I'm certain that the medical examiner will confirm my observation that a surgeon's scalpel was the instrument of death. Mr. Holmes, do you have any credible reason to believe the weapon was not a scalpel? Yeah, it had a serrated edge. We can talk about that. If you look closely at the victim's coat and at the wounds, you may notice that the fatal blade had a serrated edge. Dr. Watson can... Oh, wait. Yeah, that's right. Dr. Watson, can one find a serrated scalpel in a physician's black bag? I regret, Inspector, that I know of no such instrument in the hands of any medical man. Hmm, that is unusual, but I suspect that it is insignificant. I never said the Ripper was a doctor. Perhaps his other scalpel lost its razor edge. He's done enough foul work with it, heaven knows. Let's not confuse the investigation with trivialities, gentlemen. Perhaps the murder was intimi intimidating the style of Jack the Ripper. The gutter press has been filled with lucrative accounts of the fiend's disgusting exploits. Perhaps won't feed the bulldog, Doctor. I need facts. Mr. Holmes, my hypothesis is that the Ripper is responsible for this brutal murder. Because there may be a bit of confusion surrounding the serrated blade, I will concentrate my efforts on the question of the murder weapon. But I would not advise you and Dr. Watson looking further into this entire matter if you wish. You may speak with the witness in the victim's dressing room. And you may want to examine the victim's flat. That's what we really needed out of all this. 21 Pride Street. Okay. So we finally got what we needed out of that. One thing about this game, the music kind of just stops, so... Yeah. You must be Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson. I'm Henry Carruthers, the stage manager. Inspector Lestrade told me you might want to look about the place. Feel free. I'm afraid we can't be of much help. Poor Sarah. Is that the girl who witnessed the incident? Yes, her name is Sheila Parker. She was in that dreadful state earlier, fainted dead away. As you can see, she's still very upset. I doubt she'll be able to answer any questions just yet. Hmm. Well, let's take a look. This game's really kind of cool. I really do love the graphic style. These are pink carnations with dark red veins in the petals. This startling but common effect is probably achieved by staining the flowers in some kind of dye or staining fluid. An analysis of one of these blooms might prove useful. So, let's take them. Pick up. Okay, so we got ourselves a flower. Now, there is a card. One thing about this game, you have to really look at everything. The note reads, Dear Sarah, What's in a name? A rose by any other name would smell as sweet. A secret admirer. This misquote from Romeo and Juliet is strangely the product of a feminine right hand with the unusual habit of dotting eyes with tiny hearts. Okay, we definitely want that card. Okay. There is something, if you look, I don't know if you noticed it. There's a spring. This is a steel spring attached to a small square mass of solid brass. And we need that as well. Okay. And remember, they talked about the perfume being here. Is 
The perfume is called Eau de Sain. The label lists and the address of the perfume as Belle's Perfume in Westminster. Westminster, excuse me. Or Westminster. My lord, my, lo my English is terrible today. There is a ribbon around the bottle as if it were a gift. So any uh, English people from across the pond, so to speak, wants to correct me, please do. I'm not the best when it comes to European dialect. Okay, so we have quite a few things, but if you look, there's one other thing over here, if I can... There's a stain. The stain has a look and smell of massacre hair oil. There is a spattering around the stain, indicative of a mild impact. A single black hair, two inches long, is caught in the oil. Hmm. I don't know if I can get the... Okay, I can't. Okay. Alright, let's talk. Miss Parker, I'm sorry to trouble you. Do you think you could bring yourself to describe what you saw? I saw Sarah lying there! Oh, it's all so horrible! I can't bear to think about it! She seems near hysterical, Holmes, and rightly so. I doubt she will be much help in her current condition. Interesting. Now, we can talk to Watson. This woman's distress appears to be genuine, Watson. As a professional observer, would you say her behavior is that have suffered a terrible shock? She is certainly within what I would call the credible emotional range of such a person. I believe her response to be authentic, though the woman is an actress, and you yourself, Holmes, have fooled me countless times with your own sham performances. Yes, here we go. Watson, do you have anything that might calm Miss Parker? We might as well have the benefit of her testimony, meager though Lestrade claims it to be. Yes, Holmes, I'm carrying a potent sedative. A small dose should go... And you automatically do it. So, time to give her a sedative. Blonk! Thank you, sir. I feel better. But much like I'm swimming underwater, I think I can answer your questions now if my tongue will obey my brain. Miss Parker, do you now think you might tell us what you saw of this terrible murder? I saw Sarah lying there dead. Blood was everywhere, but especially by her head. I could see her, her insides. A man in a cloak was running off into the street, but I didn't get no good look at him. I didn't see no more than that, so honest, I, I just run in here and fainted. I guess next thing I know that Mr. Carruthers is waving his coat in my face. Well, now we have quite a few things here we can talk about. Do you know any of her friends or relatives? No, sir, not personally. I didn't even know Sarah very well. But about a week ago, Sarah got this pendant. Big, ugly thing it was, too. She said it was from her sister. I believe her name is Anna or Hannah, but I don't know where she lives. <laughs> okay. Do you know the secret admirer, the person who gave her these flowers? No, and neither did Sarah. She never was one to appreciate gifts from strangers, but she liked these that she decided to keep them. Just tonight she told me I could throw them out if I had a mind to. Now the inspector has told me to touch nothing until he completes his investigation. How am I supposed to get dressed? This perfume was a gift, wasn't it? Do you know who gave it to her? She said it was from her special friend, but I know nothing about him. He called for he called for her here from time to time, but she was very secretive, always making sure everyone was away before she brought him up. As for as I know, he's the only man to see her inside of this room, other than Mr. Carruthers. I have no idea why she didn't want to show him off. Interesting. Do you know anyone who could have been responsible for this brutal attack? I didn't know anyone on earth could do such a thing as what was done to her. Now I know there's monsters in the world for certain. But I can't believe that they're friends of mine, or Sarah's for that matter. Okay, and what was your relationship to, to Miss Carraway? I was her understudy. We were performing the play The Loves of Hattie Hill, and Sarah has the lead. I play Beth the servant girl, but I understudy the lead in case, in case, oh, I can't bear to think about it. 
Can you direct me to anyone who might help me learn more about Miss Carraway? No, sir, I'm sorry. Like I said, I didn't know her very well. She was very protective of her personal life. Interesting. Now, let's talk to Carruthers. What's the problem with the door, Mr. Carruthers? Which is to say, what are you doing? The plate is broken. I'm attempting to repair it, but I'm afraid it's quite beyond me. I'll probably have to hire a locksmith to do the work. Who forced this door? Inspector Lestrade thinks it was the Ripper. He says that the Ripper broke in here and dragged Sarah out into the alley to murder her. Do you think that's what happened, Mr. Holmes? The inspector has many fine qualities, but he is overly fond of theatrics. It is clear that the murderer did not attack Miss Carraway here in this room. What is your evidence for that, Mr. Holmes? Hmm. The location of the woman's hat. Exactly what I thought, Mr. Holmes. She wouldn't have had her hat unless she was going out the back door. That means the Ripper must have broken in during the performance and then went back outside to wait for her. I can't see that anything is missing, though. Do you know of anyone who might have harbored a grudge toward Miss Carraway? A rival? A jilted lover? Or perhaps an obsessive admirer? Certainly not. I can't imagine why anyone would want to harm her. She wasn't the greatest actress, but she was popular in a way, and sweet. Though now that you mention it, there was a young fellow who was asking about her a short time back. He seemed rather suspicious. What was suspicious about him? I found him hanging about in the alley. He asked if Sarah worked here. I offered to take a message, but he refused to leave his name or reason for calling. He was just a lad, no more than seventeen, but bright-eyed and very single-minded. He didn't want to see Sarah so much as he wanted her address. Did you give it to him? What do you take me for, sir? I don't go handing my girls over to any dimwit who just happens by. Thank you very much. My refusal didn't seem to bother him at all, though. He just smiled and thanked me for my time, pretty as you please. Then he said if I changed my mind, he'd make it with my wow and that I could leave a message for him at the Moon Gate, whatever that means. Have you called any details that might assist my investigation? I think I've told you everything I know. So let's give a number of business cards. The spring to Carruthers. I believe the spring may be helpful in repairing the lock. Why, yes, thank you. I believe that it's just the piece I need. I'll have this finished in a moment if my fingers don't fail me. Okay. Now. Let's see here. The perfume is called blah, blah, blah. The label lists the address of the perfume. Okay. So we know where to go. But we don't want to go there yet. Hey, Lestrade. Anything new? Oh, he did have something. I've said something that I have overlooked, though I suspect the chance is remote. It appears that I have a little choice to report the yard that Jack the Ripper is no longer satisfied with hunting in Whitechapel. Citywide alert must be posted. So that was, so you can read that first part if you want to pause it real quick. I didn't realize. Now, we can go to the perfume place, but that's not really where we want to go. Where is her flat? There it is. Onward, Watson! Make haste! And next time, we will search Sarah Car Caraway's flat. This has been Sax Cat 20. I know this is something new and maybe a little different, but I really hope you enjoy. Thank you. Bye.